I am really excited for this one. It is Thursday, it is time for a review, and I spent a ton of time uh, in preparation for my upcoming very first 5th edition campaign with this beautiful Talus core book from Monty Cook Games, written by Monty Cook, with the conversions to 5th edition by Sean Reynolds, and the Cypher System, which I have that book too, by Bruce Cordell. And the original book was written by Monty and came out back in 2006. It's a D&D third edition product by Malhavoc Press. And these versions were kickstarted by Monty Cook Games. And I'm really happy to have both of these with me, as well as the player's guide to Talus to kind of talk about and share with you all. So first things first, the plan right now is I'm gonna do a quick cover of of what's in these books. When I did a video, which I'll link below, a few weeks back with Judge Evie, we were talking mostly about doing bicep curls with these books. We really didn't go into a lot of detail as to what's inside them. I'll post the link, you can kind of watch that video. It's more funny, funny, haha. -ha. It wasn't a review. I'm gonna try to do a bit of a review here in an abbreviated amount of time. Mostly about the product itself, why I think it's a useful product for your game table, and more importantly, like the quality of the build. But I can't go into all the details of 650 some odd pages in one video. So if there's a demand for me to do something more with these, I'd be happy to do it. My campaign starts out in just over a week, my very first 5 year campaign, I'm really excited for it, and it'll be set in the Talish universe. And when that campaign launches, I'm gonna have a lot of information in my head. I got a lot of information in my head already from reading all this thing cover to cover. But uh, maybe I can do some Talos Tuesdays. I've talked about that. I'm not sure if there's demand for that or not. I have not seen someone else doing uh, big Talos, uh, you know, you know, a Talos specific show or vlog or whatever. But if it's out there, link that below too. Let me let me see that. So put that in the comments. I'd love to go like chase that down. But if there's a demand for that, I'll come back and we can explore the book chapter by chapter. It would take over a year. I think to cover this in the detail that it deserves. And it would take almost a year if I did it chapter by chapter, week over week. But uh, let's, let's take a look inside. I need to start out with the cover of this book. I love this cover, mostly because it's textured. So it feels like an arcane cobblestone street when you run your hands over it. And you can kind of see I can't even show the third dimension there. There is a third dimension uh, in the cover, and it feels great when you're reading it. Like it, it just, it's a, it's one of those books that if you're on the couch and you're just hanging out and you're reading through it, having your hand like just on the spine, it feels like you're holding this amazing tome that you only found recently in some exploration of a fantastical ancient library. And when you read through it, uh, you're, you're just discovering this cool forbidden knowledge. And that's fun because as a GM, you know, I don't get as immersed in the game uh, you know, during the week, I feel I'm preparing for the game and it's a lot of mechanics and looking up, well, what are the stats for this? Or what is this, what is that? But it's nice to kind of be able to take a step into that role of, of being immersed. And that's really a lot of what makes Talus amazing. It is immersive. This, the book feels alive. There's a lot happening in this book like when the book is closed. There's so much in here that feels like it's an active living city. So that when I'm actually like with the book and I'm reading the book, it just feels like there's a flow of, of, of reality coming out of this, going into my brain. And that's making no sense, but it's how I feel. Now there is a player's guide to Talus, and you can get these as well as the core book over at montycookgames.com. I will caution you, this is a system agnostic primer on the setting. This is not a book that has rules in it for either fifth edition or cipher system. So you, you, you can't, open this up and just give the players everything they need to know about their the, the, the changes. Because both the, the fifth edition core book uh, for Talus, it does require all of the D&D fifth edition books. You need the player's handbook, the dungeon master's guide, the monster manual to run it. The cipher system version is going to need a cipher system core book. So you can't just run it with this book alone for either. 
But don't give this to your players. Don't purchase this for your players thinking this is going to give them anything more than 20 pages of very useful history about the city of Talos itself. This being such an immersive setting, you really want them to have an idea of what the city is when they come into the world. That's what this is for. This is a 20 page like history lesson, like a, like a, like a Cliff Notes version of what's in store for them. It's not gonna give you any rules. One more thing I wanted to share is when you get this book, you kind of want to be careful opening up. I have the Cypher System Edition here, but both of them have the same edition in the back here. And that is this packet. And this is a great packet of goodies. This is in the PDF as well. So if you just get the PDF, you're going to get these. But what you're going to find in this packet is all kinds of really cool little additions for your players uh, to, the, to their experience. They're gonna have a calendar with special holidays. You're gonna have maps. You're gonna have a newspaper. You're gonna have a, the big fold-out map of Talos if you didn't splurge to get the big vinyl mat. So all of this is really, really great stuff. Do not keep it in the book. I found that it kind of puffs out the back of the of the book so that there's a little gap and you don't want that in there. You're not gonna, it's a lot of stuff. You're not gonna wanna keep it all together. So just take it out, put it somewhere safe and you can enjoy it later. I mentioned earlier and I've mentioned it before, this book feels alive to me and the setting feels alive. And the biggest reason I, I think is that whenever you go to an area uh, of, of the city, there is always something going on that your players can encounter. And I'll, I'll give you an example. So let's say your characters are exploring the, the Guildsman's District and they make their way, let me flip a page here, um, they make their way into the Grand Guild Hall. Um, the book itself is going to say, you know, what kind of encounters you might find in this area. It's going to give a description of this area and it gives you a scenario. So members of the guild that has had contact with the player characters invite them as a guest to a craft fair held at the Grand Guild Hall to be followed by a banquet and dance. While there, a prominent guild member is murdered and as outsiders, suspicion falls on the PCs. They must discover the real murderer to prove themselves innocent. He was killed by his wife and her lover. Spoilers! Uh, I love those additions to this book because as you are exploring and your players are exploring, very often there are call-outs that say what kind of scenario or scene or encounter would occur when the players reach that part of the map of the book. There are also individuals the party can come across, still in the Guildsman's District, and they put person on the street. They list a slightly overweight human man that walks with a limp, is balding, and that he wears a badge of the Goldsmiths Guild. They also list in here a tall human woman um, with garb that looks fairly simple. Uh, she is not what she appears, uh, carrying her in in ink stained hands. She carries bundles of broadsheets and that she actually works for the Church of Lothian. I love these little additions because as your players are moving around, if you're trying to, as a game master, run a game on, a fly, on the fly, uh, where Lankmar, which is also a wonderful uh, you know, campaign setting set in a city, well, Lankmar really uh, includes and, and involves a lot of use of random charts and tables, which can, can be repetitive depending on where you're at. Talus... Well, Tala spends 600 pages giving you an entire city. Uh, so it's it's two very different feels. It's two very different kinds of campaigns. Neither neither one is better or worse than the other. But if you want everything I've spelled out for you and you don't want to have to, you know, find a way to link a random encounter or a random role into the adventure, Talus tells you what's happening then and there, which is why when this book is closed, I feel like Talus is still doing something. Whether it's dealing with the effects of crime and punishment or wanting to know how much it costs to run a household or maybe just what it costs to uh, live at a certain income level, Talos has all that. It, it's all in here. So that's why, again, this is, a, this is an open world kind of campaign and you're going to want to be ready for your players to bounce around and do whatever they want to do. Uh, I know there are some mechanics already in other Dungeons and & Dragons and Cypher System supplements for experiences like that. 
Talos goes into great depth in this. And if you want to know like what it's going to cost your players each month for their apartment, it's in here. If you want to know what kind of lifestyle they want to have, it's in here. Or maybe if they were possessing illegal goods, what's the fine? Well, the fine's in here. We're going to dip into some of the new rules, and this is where I'm going to kind of break away and say I don't know exactly what's in the cipher side of this. I'm going to say it's probably very similar. I know they have to cover it. That was kind of the plan with the book, but I did not read the cipher book page, like page by page. I read the 5e book. I ain't reading through that one again. Uh, just not anytime soon. So I will say there are some new additions to the game that, uh, you know, when it comes to rules, there is a lot of technology in this game. Talus exists in a weird quasi steampunk, I'd almost say saltpeter punk. I, I like to think of it maybe as the late 18th, early 19th century uh, with a bit more fantasy in there and some more fantastical stuff included, uh, but with you know, still knights and broadswords and stuff. There's There are guns. There are guns in this game. Uh, there's a whole bunch of firearms and everything from a repeating rifle uh, to the more common double pistol, dragon pistol, hand cannon. Guns start out at about 250 gold pieces to purchase a, a firearm. So it's on the, the higher end of the pricey point. But a higher level campaign is going to, you're going to have guns running around and you have to decide if you want that in your game. I don't see how it would be hard to remove it from your game. You could just say, our Talos has no guns, but it does, it is in the field. I, you have these really expensive uh, security guards in the noble district that, you know, are armed with dragon rifles. That's kind of cool. So you're going to be taking something out of the game, but you want to make sure that you are, your players know this isn't Lord of the Rings style fantasy. The other thing that's in here that I think is really cool, and it's sort of geared in a way towards, you know, villains, is something called Chaos Attack. And Chaos Attack is drawn from pure chaos. It is technology that is, uh, you know, kind of drawn from the entities that are imprisoned in Talus. So, spoiler alert, uh, Talas is a prison world where the the prisoners are these uh, demons uh, called the the Galshut or the Gal Galshut. Uh, they're they're imprisoned on this world, and the player characters and all the heroes of Talas have to deal with these uh, creatures. They may not know the lore behind it, but they're prisoners, and they want to get out. They want to get free. And one of the things they do is they entice people with this chaos attack, and it feels kind of like cyber tech. Uh, but organic cyber tech. So uh, there's actually a great uh, piece of art in here uh, by RK Post that I love, mainly because he did uh, a lot of the alternative art, and the feel is just, the feel is pretty damn cool. Uh, I, I love the art in this book in general, but I love that picture. You know, a, a, maybe a, a good way to explain it is if you're a fan of The Strange and you think of the world of Rook, where it's like organic, uh, cyber tech. That's what Chaos Attack to me feels like. But if you have a bunch of player characters running around with it, it's gonna be a bad day. They're gonna get, you know, pulled to the dark side. I will say this, if you're looking for things to pull out of this game and put it in your own game, that's, you know, I mean, not, isn't based in Talus, you could very easily take the Chaos Attack and pull it out. It's only about I think 10 pages uh, maybe uh, of, of information so I wouldn't go picking up this giant book just for those pages but if you have the PDF and you really like the system you know give it a go try it in, in another setting I think it would fit really well in Eberron if you're running as a 5e setting or if you're running uh, you know the the, the fifth edition of the uh, cypher system version of it it's gonna feel fun in Numenera when it comes to running a Talos campaign, the book does go into great detail of the best ways to run it in your home game. And uh, you know, if you you could you could easily use this as I'm going to use it as a full campaign setting, where everything in the setting takes place in and around the city of Talos, or most importantly, underneath the city of Talos. I mean, a full I don't know, uh, like like. 20% of this book is dealing with what's happening 
beneath the city or just beneath the streets and the sewer levels. And it goes deeper and deeper. And then you've got the friggin' spire. You have this giant, you know, half mile tall spire of, of this arcane spire. It's just juts up out of the ground. What the hell is in that? I'm not putting that spoiler in here. But I will say that, you know, you can run a whole campaign in here. Having read through this, I would not have a challenge doing so. And I've run campaigns in other cities. I've done uh, three Lankmar campaigns so far. I've run a campaign in uh, in Sigil back in my Planescape days. And I've run a whole campaign in Sharn in Eberron. Having run those, you're not going to have a problem with doing that here. If anything, there's more meat in this book than you're going to find in any other material for any other city that I've ever read. And if someone else wants to, you know, throw another option out there, please do. And this isn't really a challenge. I have no, no skin in the game here. But I will say, like, if there's ever been a product where you can run everything in one small, like, you know, 20 square mile area, this is it. Uh, there is a world outside of Talus. There's a whole story about there being a great empire and there are three potential emperors all vying to be the emperor at this time and the, the empire is fracturing. And one of those individuals is actually uh, trying to claim the throne from Talus and make Talus the new capital of, of this amazing empire. And that adds you know, a lot of potential political intrigue later on in the campaign for sure. But if you don't wanna mess around with everything around Talus, you don't have to. You could very, very easily just take Talus out and put it somewhere else. So if you want to make it a city in your home campaign, you could you could do so. If you have any kind of blank space on your map, you can add Talus. Talus itself, the, the world of Premal, is not accessible outside the ethereal plane. One of the 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 mechanics of the game is that since it's a prison world, you can't easily get to it or get away from it. You, you only gods can travel to and from the world. Because of that, you could have it be, I don't want to say a domain of dread. You're not going to Ravenloft this. It's not a dark world. There are some dark facets to it, but it's not, it's not Ravenloft. But you could make it some kind of demi-plane that players travel to or exist or travel from eventually if they get free of it. So don't feel like Talus has to be something where it's just this book and there's nothing else. You could string this together. You could end up making a whole new map if you want that includes Talus and maybe a different area. Maybe the rest of your campaign setting you know, exists in the same world as Talus and maybe the whole setting is a prison for uh, the Galshoot. Possibly it's just the city of Talus. And if that's the case, then you could really easily plop this down wherever you want. All of the weird arcane stuff that's making the, all the dungeons and labyrinths below the city and makes the spire jut up out of the ground, that can be happening in one place. It would not take a, an ingenious GM much time to come up with a reason why this exists. For me, I just feel like it's going to make more sense to do the whole setting here. It, like I said, it's my, first fifth, it's my first fifth edition setting. I'm really excited to do it in this world. And I think with that, I'm going to wrap up my review, my short review of Talus. So I, I know I just glossed over a lot of this. I know I went through it really quickly. And uh, like I said, if there's demand for me to do a week on Midtown and a week on the Necropolis and a week on Old Town, like a 10 minute snippet of each, happy to do it. Or we can just leave it here. And maybe I'll talk about it in a future time when I have uh, a few adventures under my belt in Talus. But if you've picked this up, if you have any ideas about how to use Talus in your home game, please leave a comment below. Let's chat about it and we can see you know, what you're doing with this book. Maybe some of you have started a Talus campaign already, or maybe you've explored Talus back when it came out in 2006. So that's what I got, and that's where I'm at. And I guess play nice, kiddos, and I will see you all tomorrow.